The shed blood of the Messiah gives us access to salvation. But how does one obtain salvation? Well, John 3.16 comes to mind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, the Son of God, should not perish, but have everlasting life. The word believeth there in John 3.16 is Strong's number G4100. The word is pistio. It is, means to have faith in or of, to entrust one's spiritual well-being to Christ, the Messiah. So, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever has trust or faith in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But let's continue down 20 verses more in John 3, and look at John 3, 36. It continues, it says, He that believeth has faith on the Son, hath everlasting not life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth in him. So look, let's look at the difference between belief and believeth not. Believeth and believeth not. Going back to Strong's, it's the number G544, the Greek word apithio, apithio. It means disobedient or obey not. So let's look at that. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not, he that disobeys or obeys not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth in him. And that's the King James Version. But let's look at several other versions that maybe give us a better different definition of that. John 3.36, we're looking at the Living Bible. And all who trust him, God's Son, to save them have eternal life. Those who don't believe and obey him shall never see heaven, but the wrath of God remains on them. Let's look at the New American Standard. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Let's look at the New Living Translation. And anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life. Anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's angry judgment. Let's look at the Revived, revived Standard Version. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. He who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God rests upon him. Let's look at the English Standard Version. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. And the Good News Translation. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not have life, but will remain under God's punishment. Look at each one of these. It says, he who believes has faith in the Son has eternal life. You see, when we accept the shed blood of the Messiah, the Son of God, he then puts his spirit within us. He will cause you to walk in his statues and you will keep his judgments and do them. He will put his law in your minds and on your hearts, according to scripture. So why does John 3.36 say, He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but, the word but, he who does not obey the Son will not see life. It's because we have faith. Salvation is through faith in the shed blood of the Messiah. But obedience, obedience will come after we believe. If obedience is not there, it will be the evidence that the faith was never there. So in reality, on John 3, 36, we can say, He that obeys the Son has eternal or everlasting life, and he that obeys not the Son, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth 
on him. That's why the writer of Hebrews in chapter five, verse nine says, and being made perfect, he, Christ, became the author of eternal salvation unto them that obey him. In Matthew 19, verses 16 through 17, it says, and behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And Christ said unto him, why do you call me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. When Christ was asked, which is the great commandment in the law, Christ answered, according to Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So many Christians today believe it's just all you have to do is love God and love your neighbor for salvation. But see, Christ was not creating two new commandments in the New Testament. He was quoting the commandments that are already in the law in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. And he said, on these two commandments, on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. You see, if you love the Lord the, thy God according to the scriptures, and if you love your neighbor according to the scriptures, you will not break any of the Old Testament laws. I was raised in a Baptist church, and one of the hymns that we used to sing that I can remember growing up was Trust and Obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. That is so scriptural, but I wonder why. So many in my family and so many that I used to go to church with, when I tried to apply this to my life, I was disowned and shunned away to trust and obey. So back to the question, the shed blood of the Messiah gives us access to salvation, but how does one obtain salvation? It is absolutely and only through the faith in the shed blood of the Son of God, the Messiah. And that faith will be evident, evident in our obedience to the Father.